All right, what's going on, you fam? Or you didn't hear? The game is out of maintenance, and man, Shallot is now a sparking character. Pretty clever of them to let you swap between him being a hero or a sparking character. Uh, the new illustration for sure already makes it clear, but damn, they completely revamped Shallot. My goodness. If we take a look at each one of his forms, each one offers a brand new kit. We're going to go ahead and just start with uh, Shallot as his base form. Holy crap, dude. I was saying, um, you know, if they want Shallot to be good for literally every tag, make him a support type in some shape or form. And that's what they did. So here's Shallot with his new stats, which is obviously impressive. Much better. Uh, every single one of his forms, the biggest weakness was that fact that his base form was complete trash. Um, but now... His stats are a lot more closer to what a modern character looks like, which is fantastic. Um, everything is pretty much the same strike blast. You know, here's whatever green card you want. Sorry, whatever blue card you want. Here's a green card. Uh, pretty uh, straightforward stuff, but look at the new abilities. This is just his base form. Restore on health by 30%, key by 40. Uh, you get 30% damage inflicted by al uh, Sorry, 30% damage inflicted for yourself. You get card draw speed. 25% damage buff for your allies, an additional 15% for episode game originals, and shorten the ally sub count by 3. By 3. Isn't that crazy? Shallot's main ability does literally everything. What is this? That's crazy. Z ability is very good uh, in the fact that it is max HP. Um, but then look at the rest of his kit. Battle starts, 80% damage inflicted, 60% reduced damage received. Shows up on the field, randomly draw a new card if you have three or fewer. Get 20 key, 20% strike damage. If you have a defeated battle member, heal 15%. 70% additional damage with 70% key recovery. So if you lost someone, Shallot already has 150% damage inflicted, but that's not all. Second passive. Uh, if he's on the field for longer than three timer counts, he's going to get 30 key and another 60% damage inflicted. Now, of course... It doesn't say it cannot be cancelled, so it can't be taken away. But that's still insane to me. What are these multipliers? 210% out of two passives. Now, it, it changes if you either switch or, uh, you know, you do your transformation, whatever. Uh, he has a strike cover change, which is obviously very cool. And then when he changes cover, randomly destroy one of your own cards to get a special move card. 10% reduced damage received and a buff, a healing buff to episode game original characters and restore 40% of the damage received when changing cover. Shallot gets 70% reduced damage received, heals 40% of the damage, 210% damage inflicted if you lost an ally, and his main ability is an absolute insane support. 25% damage inflicted for your allies. For Shallot himself, man, is he not giving himself 70% because 30% for the buff, 25% allies is inclusive, so including himself, and then an additional 15% right there and then? Shallot is kind of goofy. That's crazy. And this is just his base form. It gets crazier as you look at the other transformations, which we're going to go take a look at. Go over to customize. Here's a new menu. We're going to go ahead and change it to something else. Uh, here's where the additional character tags can come in, which is obviously very nice because... Get the team Bardock buff with this equip. The EX Fasha gives cover nullification to her allies. So that includes Shallot now. Uh ah. Clever idea, isn't it? Super cool to me. Let's go ahead and change which transformation Shallot has this time. We're gonna go to Super Saiyan. I wanna see what e what each one does. I think every single kit is drastically different. So I think to start, the main ability changes for sure. He's no longer doing that monster support. He is now transforming to whatever he's trying to change into. Um, yeah, stats wise, all the same. Uh, everything is the same here pre-transformation, but let's go ahead and jump right into Transform Shallot. So Super Saiyan, stats wise, holy crap, pretty good. 
Uh, his green card is draw a special move arts card next. So he's going to go ahead and get himself a new blue card. Restore on key by 30. 70% vanish gauge restore. 20% damage inflicted. Like, look at this. What a drastic revamp. So his second main ability, draw a special arts card next, restore 30 key and key by 50, you get card draw speed minus 5 to own arts costs. Happens after 10 timer counts, Z ability is the same, applies the formal effects to self after transforming, 50% damage, uh, damage inflicted, 50% key recovery, minus 10 to special move costs, increase a dragon ball. Applies the formal effects when he enters the field, you know, if you have 3 or fewer cards, get another card. 20 key, 20% 20 damage inflicted, and then what do we got here? Applies the formal effects to self according to the number of timer counts have elapsed post-transformation. After 10 timer counts, 15% more damage, 10% blue card damage. After 20, another 15% damage and more blue card damage. But after 30, another 15% damage with 10% more blue card damage. Look at this. Second passive, strike cover chain. Oh, sorry, this is for blast. He's got a new cover change. This one is for blast, chainable with the blue card. Applies the formal effects to self when this character enters the field or transforms if there is a defeated battle member. 15% damage inflicted, 15% reduced damage received. Card draw speed. His main ability already gave him card draw speed. So Super Saiyan Shallot can get level two card draw speed if you have a defeated battle member. Applies the following effects to self when this character enters the battlefield or transforms if there is a defeated battle member. Isn't that insane? Uh, just for clarification there, I'm pretty sure what it's saying is if you already have a defeated battle member, shall it in his base forms on the field and then you transform, you get these buffs. So level 2 card draw speed for shall it. The effects uh, reset after he switches. Uh, applies the following effects to self. When this character shows up on the field, if there is a defeated battle member, another Dragon Ball, another blue card, and restore 50 key. Isn't that crazy? This is just Super Saiyan Shallot. Look at that. That's amazing. I can't... I, I'm actually really excited for, to see what the Super Saiyan 3 variant looks like then. Because uh, it seems like every single one of these is busted. Alright, Super Saiyan 2. This game has very little representation of Super Saiyan 2, so I hope this one is much better. Uh, but remember, the Super Saiyan 2 Shallot was a support for Super Saiyan 2 characters. He was like a mini Bardock for them. So I'm very curious to see what he does. Let's just cap out his stats. Stats-wise, he looks a lot more defensive. What the hell? 200k strike defense? What? So standard strike and blast. Blue card is the same. Green card. Uh, restore on key by 40. 35% of strike damage inflicted for 25 timer counts. What the hell? 25 timer counts. And you reduce ally sub count. Very cool. Let's see. Main ability. Destroy all of your own cards. Randomly draw four new ones. Restore key by 60. Minus 5 to strike card cost. 35% to ally strike damage inflicted for 25 timer kills. So there's that little baby support. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's just 20 key, 20% uh, HP. That's fine. So the ability is the same. All right. Plus the following effects to self after transforming. 40% damage inflicted. He has endurance. Super Saiyan 2 Shallot has endurance. Restore own health by 30% only once when it reaches zero. Applies the following effects to self when this character enters the battlefield. Guaranteed draws a strike card. Purple Super Saiyan 3 version 2.0. Restore 20 key, 20% 20 damage inflicted with card draw speed. Any unit that has guaranteed card to draw with card draw speed combos forever. I think Super Vegito did a good job of showing that. After his Zenkai Awakening, I think that guy does the exact same thing. Very interesting. Endurance. Guaranteed strike card with card draw speed. Plus the following effects to self per defeat a battle member when this character enters the field. So if we lost all our allies, 80% damage inflicted, 80% key recovery, heal 30%. Second passive, this one looks to be a strike cover change. Okay. I'm very curious if they're all unique strike or blast cover changes. Very, very curious to see how they work. Applies the following effects to allies when this character switches to standby. 30 key, 20% damage inflicted, 40% key recovery. 
applies the following effects to allied Super Saiyan 2 or game original characters. An additional 20% damage inflicted with a 30% crit rate. There it is. They still kept the baby Bardock support for Super Saiyan 2 characters. This is nuts. It's like every iteration of Shallot is actually really good. But we don't care about the rest of them. We care about this one here. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see. The number one thing I want... Please drop the time transformation, because thats I don't think that has any reason to exist. Let's go ahead and see. Cap out his stats. Transform. God damn! 304k for his strike. Jesus, that is a lot. Uh, strike and blast are the same. Blue card is the same. Green card. Draw a strike card. 55 key. 20% strike damage inflicted. Alrighty. Four transformation. Uh, oh my god. Really, game? Why? 60 timer counts? God damn it. I don't understand why they introduced time transformation still, but either way. Turned into Super Saiyan 3, 60 timer counts. Restore 20% of your health. Key by 30. 100% vanish restore, and you get cover nullification. Very, very good. I like that. That looks cool, but let's transform. What is it? What does your second main look like? Restore 25% HP key by 30, 30% damage inflicted, minus 5 to strike and blast cost for 30 timer counts, uh, card draw speed for 30 timer counts, and nullify endurance post main, very good. Only 5 timer counts need to elapse. First passive, show up on the battlefield. Uh, oh, sorry, just until the transformation ends. 70% damage inflicted, card draw speed, minus 10 to enemy sustained damage cut effects, very strong. Applies the following effects to self if this character enters the field if or transforms with a defeated battle member. 30 key, 30% damage inflicted. Uh, effect reset after character switch or when transformation ends. Randomly destroy one enemy card when changing cover. Okay. Uh, where? Okay, whatever. We'll take that. Uh, knock enemy back to long range if cover team is performed on a strike. Okay. Plaza the following effects to self every time this character uses an arts card. Restore 5 key, 15% damage inflicted. Uh, plus the following effects to self based on own remaining HP after the enemy attack is over. If your HP is 50% or more, you get 30% damage buff for 15 counts. But if your HP dips below 50%, you get a permanent 60% damage inflicted buff. I ain't gonna lie, I was hoping that every iteration of Shallot would be a support for whatever his transformation is. I think that would have been cool. Super Saiyan 2 is a buff to Super Saiyan 2. He could have been an additional buff for Super Saiyan 3, and subsequently an additional buff for Super Saiyan God. But yeah, Super Saiyan 3 looks strong too. I'm noticing there's no reduced damage received passive here. But yeah, cover nullification is part of Super Saiyan 3 with card draw speed, with stacking damage inflicted. Very curious to see how well Shallot performs. And then of course, our final transformation, Super Saiyan God. The best version that we have right now. Let's see what Shallot does. Very curious to see what he does here. I'm gonna cap out his stats. Looking pretty good, well balanced. Is he? Wasn't he a more blast oriented as uh, Super Saiyan God? I don't know. Uh, green card. Restore on key by 50 upon activation. Applies the following effects on hit. Card draw speed. Nullify cover change on his green. Yo. This is literally what we've been asking for. Shallot has a melee base green card that you can chain into, but it didn't have cover change. So it was, uh, it almost felt a bit useless because he had to figure out a nifty little drop combo, but it nullifies cover change. Damn, it's like a baby version of 1718, but uh, his obviously needs a little bit more work to actually land. Uh, but I mean, hey, a free character having card draw speed, chainable with all cards pretty much all cards and cover change is pretty good all right ability main uh he gets draw a special move arts card next restore on health by 20 percent key by 50 30 percent blue card damage cannot be canceled cancel enemy buffs pretty good 
applies the following effects to self after transforming. 50% damage buff, minus 5 to strike, minus 10 to blast, 100% key recovery, apply a buff, nullify attribute downgrade of normal conditions, so I think that includes Hercules Paralysis, but I apparently never remember. Show up on the field, randomly draw a new card if you have 3 or fewer, restore 30 key, 30% to the next strike damage, or 30% to the next blast damage. Applies the follow effects to self after enemy attack is over, restore on health by 10%. Activates three times. Card draw speed. Uh, this is exactly like the Super Saiyan 2 blue trunks. I got a Zenkai Awakening a long while ago. The blast oriented one. But he cannot be stacking the card draw speed. Uh, okay. New heights. Co uh, you got a cover change against blast. Chainable with the blue. Every time he uses a card, 15% damage inflicted. Makes the blue card cheaper by three. The following effects occur when enemy performs a vanishing step. While this character is on the field, randomly draw one new card when you have three or fewer, restore zone key by 20, reduce damage received by 10%, and shorten ally sub count. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, it honestly looks like... I actually think the Super Saiyan 2 variant might be the best one. It's like the perfect mixture of you're an offensive unit with tons of card draw speed, as well as the support for your allies. I feel like the Super Saiyan 2 variant might be the best one. I could be wrong, but it, it's starting to seem like it. Overall, Shalit got an amazing new buff. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, every single form has some nifty quirkiness thing that makes him useful for almost all his teams. Uh, the costumes, not every single one of them guarantees a new tag, but it looks like they focused on some of the more underwhelming ones. So Frieza Force, Team Bardock, and Super Warrior can provide a new tag for Shout, which is good. Now, he's not the only one that got a power-up. I know that the Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks got a Zenkai Awakening as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. What does he bring to the table? New stats. Damn! Oh my god, I gotta remember that these new stats are also a reflection of getting the grade boost to 99. Because yes, these things buff up your stats. Yeah, I gotta pay attention to that. But look at that. 13k to additional defenses as part of the special grade boost. I'm so tempted to just buff up special boost for literally every single character just to up their defenses. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. Blue card, Major Explode, 50% blue card damage for three timer counts upon activation if enemy is immobilized. Green card, immobilize, shorten sub count, restore 50 key. Enemy takes 20% more damage with minus 70% to key. Defer the only ranged ultimate in the game. Massive Explode, 20% ult damage. What? If you have three battle members, 75% 70, chance to faint. What is this? That is definitely going to be a cheese mechanic. Main ability, ultimate, uh, is drawn. Restore our own health by 20%, key by 50. Sure. Uh, oh, his Zenkai ability. I really hope this is for yellow Fusion Warriors. I don't want it to be yellow Majin Buu Saga because one, Fusion Warriors need it. And two, uh, if it has to be between hybrids and Fusion Warrior, I want it to go to future, well, Fusion Warrior because uh, otherwise this will go exactly to Future Gohan. And I don't think any of us want to deal with more hybrid craziness. So please, Fusion Warrior. Okay, perfect. Woo. You can go ahead and get this Ultra Super Vegito. It is fine by me. Now let's go ahead and see what we got here. So uh, the following effects occur to self when the battle starts. 40% damage inflicted, 30% damage inflicted for 50 timer counts, reduced damage received, 30%, 50% key recovery, alright. Uh, show up on the field, minus 10 to strike costs, 30% key recovery, 30% to vanish recovery, what? 30% to vanish recovery, huh. I wonder how impactful that's going to be, isn't Kid Boo's like 50%? And even then it may take a little bit of a while, so I'm not sure if that's going to be as drastic unless the plan is that you nail the the howl green card and it buys you enough time to get your vanish back puzzle funnel effects when you change cover reduce damage received by 40 percent so that's 70 percent with the other passive here okay uh with card draw speed and restore 30 percent of the damage taken on the cover change up to 30 percent 50 percent to own strike damage inflicted for 15 timer counts when this activates very good 
The fall affects the curve own remaining health is 50% or below after being hit by an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the field. Happens once. 20% damage inflicted reduces enemy key by 30. Seal one enemy card randomly. Sealed card cannot be used for 10 counts. Fall effects occur upon landing a strike or blast hit. Randomly draw a new card. Hey, that's very similar to the LF green trunks. Uh, activation count resets when the character switches. 10% damage inflicted. Ooh! 70% after landing 7 cards. Randomly destroy one. Randomly destroy one enemy card? So every time Gotenks is landing cards, you just randomly destroy one? Wow, look at that. It doesn't happen only once, right? It You can just keep killing cards? That may not be good against the Ultra Kid Boo. Granted, he's going to keep healing, but... Uh, yeah, that's interesting. And then the enemy takes 10% more damage inflicted. Okay. Overall, uh, he doesn't look like that bad of a Zenkai, actually. Uh, if we take the sum of everything, 40% damage inflicted, 30% there for 50 counts, uh, 30%, nope, not right there, 20% there, and he's able to stack up 7, so 160% damage inflicted at peak. But these stats? That's not bad at all, actually. Uh, pretty good. He is a, he's a pretty decent second option yellow for Fusion Warriors, I suppose. Yeah, not too bad. The, the new arts boost system is definitely going to throw everyone for a whirl when it comes to reading stats now because everything's skewed by 13k, I believe. I think every single one of them is 13k. Yeah, that's going to be a bit tricky. I hope the defensive scaling is superior to the offensive scaling. And what I mean by that is 13k to strike and blast defense is drastically more impactful than 13k to both strike attack and blast attack. Do you know what I mean? My hope is that it translates to units being at least a little bit more tanky because offensive power creep in this game is insane. Now, that's not it. Apparently this update brought a little bit more. It is in the form of equipment. Look. So, number one, green ultimate Gohan, the Zenkai one, got his own platinum equipment. Look at that, kind of just snuck in there. So, 40% to strike, blast, and 20% damage inflicted, already off to a good start. Slot 2, 15% max HP, 15% uh, to own strike and blast defense if there is a battle member other than this character from the Majin Buu Saga. Pretty good. I like that. And then his a red slot on the final bit here. The follow effects occur to self when this character uses a green card. 15% damage inflicted, only happens once. Reduced damage received, only happens once. Randomly draw one new card and restores Vanish. But the Vanish restoration is unlimited. That's pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad of an equip. I don't think it's going to be anything too insane, but uh, obviously it's still a respectable power-up for the character. And of course, hybrids for some reason get yet another stupid equip here in the form of them getting 35% strike attack. Key recovery is whatever, but the fact that they get 12% max HP when you're fighting with another hybrid scene pretty much is kind of silly. I mean, damn. Basically means if you're fighting with Pan, get 12% max HP. <laughs> That's kind of nifty, uh, nifty for sure. Hybrid Sands, once again, getting broken equips. But otherwise, I think that's everything. You guys let me know in the comment section below what do you think about Shalit's new abilities, which form do you think is the best, and more importantly, I wonder what other heat they're, they're holding on to for the fifth year anniversary, because it's already shaping up to be pretty good. Note that in the data download, sorry, not the data download, but in the, the news, they added something new. They added something very interesting. If I can find it, it's not in this version update, is it? Uh, where is it? Crap. Just to let you know, they have introduced new summon animations. Obviously, they're not live right now. I'm going to assume it's because uh, they're going to save it for 5th year anniversary, of course. But new summon animations exist in the game, which is pretty cool. I hope it's not just a colored background. I hope it's genuine new summon animations. But let's go ahead and wait until the 5th year to see those things. 
That's going to be it. It is time for a bajillion shallot showcases and Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. But until then, guys, you have a good one. Peace.